What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we have the information for the new batch of characters. I did upload the video yesterday that was revealed on Twitter showing off the new animations for the new Sugofest exclusive Edward Newgate as well as Rayleigh and Gaban. Now there are also additional rare recruits with Shanks and Buggy. We don't know what they do yet. Additionally, a new super evolution is coming. Now we don't know who this character is linked to yet obviously it's luffy but we don't know who is super evolving right there are a lot of different options and lots of theories are going around in the community the obvious selection would be quick final tap luffy and if that is the case i'm going to be so excited and it looks to me look in my opinion just going off of the image that we can see here i'm going to assume that it's red rock luffy which would make sense for it to be final tap luffy however people have theorized that potentially it could be the login luffy the ichiban kuji login luffy that we got during the new year celebration could just be receiving a five plus because this this is an assumption that it's a six plus it's what people would be guessing because it is blue so if it is the final tab luffy that'd be awesome if it's the login luffy it's a possibility to be a five plus it could also be like super type snake man becoming from strength unit into a quick unit it could be stampede luffy like there's lots of different ideas flowing around in terms of who this is my guess is still final tap luffy and that is my hope i really hope that we that we get it the copium is flying right now and a new free to play odin which is likely the event farm character that we can get our hands on during this event but with all that being said let's jump into the information that we have at hand for the two new batches of characters being whitebeard and the uh the raelian gaban so so let's go ahead and jump into Whitebeard first. He is the headliner character for this. Let's go ahead and break him down. So the, the character himself is a Dex Striker powerhouse, and he is a super class powerhouse, which is, you know, pretty straightforward. It's what you'd expect for, for Whitebeard, Striker powerhouse. And you do see that he is super tandems. So that's exciting, just straight off the bat. I'm really, really pumped about that. His captain ability, it will halve your crew's health at the start of the quest, boost your crew's HP by 1.5 times, and then if the crew's HP is above 50% when you launch your attack, he will go ahead and uh, boost Dex Striker Powerhouse by 5 times and do 250 times his attack and Dex damage to all enemies at the end of the turn. If you are below 50%, it's a 5.5 times attack boost instead and you do 400 times his attack and Dex damage at the end of the turn. Now, while this does seem pretty awesome, you do start at low HP, which is pretty typical of Whitebeard-related stuff we've seen in the past. And obviously, if you partner this with, you know, double Whitebeard, um, I'm not too sure if you're on double Whitebeard if it actually cuts your health down to 25%. If it doesn't, you can also use the Moby Dick ship, which will also cut your health in half again. So you start at really low HP, which means that, you know, you're going to do a lot of end of turn damage. But the thing here is, is that end of turn damage captains, they have, they're a double-edged sword. Well, yes, it is good to get wave clearing mechanics as a captain. You do have to remember that you're going to be killing all these mobs super quickly. You're reaching the boss stages faster, which means you need to get your cooldowns. And he does not have cooldown reduction in his captain. And for that reason, this is going to go in that same category as characters of old. Characters like the old Lin Lin that released last year with Legend Marco. While she has a really unique captain that can allow you to speed farm, get to bosses very quickly... In, in, in content where the character isn't receiving cooldown, you're in a bit of a pickle because you don't have your specials, you reach these boss stages and you're in trouble. So you would hope that there are mechanics in his kit that are able to reduce cooldowns. Unfortunately, that is not the case. So just by captain ability alone, I don't see this guy being used that much. Only in content where you're able to secure those cooldowns. So you would be, want to be partner, partnering him up with another captain that is enabling you to get the cooldowns. But at face value, I'm not a big fan. And then of course you get access to his super class special when you use him as a captain. And you need one of his crew members from Marco, Jozu, Vista, Whitey Bay, Fossa, Rakuyo, Kingdu, Atmos, Marshall D. Teach, Kozuki Odin, Izo, Dogstorm, Cad Viper, or when your health is 30% or below. So it's not it's not that hard in order to get it. The effect is very simple though, where you go ahead and get a 500 times attack in dex damage to all enemies and extends the duration of your cruise slot effect boosts by two turns. 
and that's all it does. In my opinion, I would have preferred it if it was just minus two cooldown to the whole crew, plus the damage. That would have been probably a little bit better. I, I mean, honestly, minus three cooldown to the crew probably would have been better. Um, but yeah, it's it's not that exciting. Let's have a look at this special, though. It does a 20% health cut that ignores all defensive effects, and it also ignores normal attacks only. So this, I think... Aside from dual Blackbeard, this is the only health cut that does bypass normal attacks only. So this is a this is a pretty big deal. It also will boost Dex, Striker, and Powerhouse characters slot effects by 2.75 times for one turn. And if the crew has an orb boost when you launch the special, you get a 2.5 attack boost to the same colors and classes. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. It's, it's kind of, you know, reducing that redundancy where you can have an orb boost. And if you already got one, you get an attack boost instead or vice versa. It's pretty cool. But then furthermore, it says that if you have 50% or more health when you launch the special, you do get 70% damage reduction for one turn. And if you have 50% or below HP, you do get 90% damage reduction instead, and then increases your attack and all boost by 0.25, and it will buff the effect from the special. Meaning that if you're below 50%, you will get a three times all boost, or if you're above it, or if you already have, you know, the uh, the orb boost, then you get the 2.75 times attack boost instead. That is actually pretty strong. Like, it, it is a big buff that you're receiving, and a 20% health cut that goes through normal attacks only. You can't discredit that. That is very, very strong. But once again, we get to the same issue, is you're likely going to reach the end of content without getting your cooldowns. And that's the thing that I'm really worried about with this character in general. So I am very, very concerned. So let's move on to some additional abilities. He has his crewmate ability to make deck slots matching to strike a powerhouse. He also boosts their stats. His support effect attaching to the same characters that are required for his um, uh, super class effect. And the actual support will give the supported character a two times attack boost and 50% damage reduction when you launch the special i don't know how useful this is going to be but one thing that is predominant in this guy's kit so far is damage reduction and while it makes sense because you're a low hp this is going to partner really well with the newly released versus yamato with the percent damage reduction based attack boost as there are lots of mechanics here that can give big damage increases like a 70 percent damage reduction to get a 1.7 bonus or a 90 percent damage reduction to get you know a 1.9 bonus is is pretty strong with a character that can synergize is very well with that versus Yamato. Now, the other thing we have to talk about is the Super Tandem. So the Super Tandem at level 5 does require two characters from his crew. So that is a pretty big drawback. So the effect Marco, Jozu, Vista, Wadi Bay, Fossa, Rakuyo, Blackbeard, Kingdu, Atmos, Odin, Izo, Dogstorm, Cat Viper. It is weird that those characters are not listed for his support. You know, the Izo, Dogstorm, Cat Viper is a little bit odd. And at level 5, you get a tandem attack boost of 1.75 to strike a powerhouse. So that is a little bit bad because most super tandems are at least a 2 times boost. 1.75 is definitely on the weaker end. And then applies a 1.5 times increased damage taken for one turn. But it doesn't go through full immunity buffs. So again, a little bit of an issue. But of course, if, if the enemy is not going to have a full immunity, this is a really strong super tandem effect when you, you know, account for everything. But... If they have full immunity, the super tandem is not as powerful. So overall, th there's definitely some cool things with this white beard. I do like the character, but there are issues with him, of course. And I think the cooldown is the biggest issue. If he had minus two cooldown in his captain, you know, I think honestly, a lot of these things would be mitigated in my personal opinion. So that's going to be the biggest issue, but he's going to be a really good crewmate nonetheless, because he has a really good boosting effect with his special and the 20% health cut that bypasses everything is incredibly powerful. You cannot discredit that at all. But uh, overall, he just seems like a pretty okay legend. We also have the Pyrumble Rumble abilities of Whitebeard to talk about. So let's go ahead to his Rumble ability, which will give Powerhouse level 6 health, level 6 attack, and for the first 30 seconds, he gives self-defense level 4. Personally, not a big fan of that. I, I really don't like how prevalent they give HP and attack. Maybe they do recognize that defense is such a powerful mechanic, but I'm not a fan of that. I think, uh, you know, attack is fine. HP, like, level 2, and then, like, defense level 2, I think that probably would have been all right, uh, at least at least a balance factor, but for the first 30 seconds to give himself defense up doesn't make a lot of sense when you see the rest of his kit. So, you see that it does have a 20 CT. I would take this with a grain of salt, because there have been so many times in the past they reveal a character on Twitter, and the CT that they list in the tweet is incorrect. A lot of the times, it's 10 less, but 
I don't know how this is going to go because when you have a look at the next character, their CT is really weird as well. So 20 CT, I don't think it'll be 20. It's probably going to be 30. Now it targets powerhouse characters for six attack and gives himself a 1.5 counter for 15 seconds. And after 60 seconds have passed, his special will target all enemies for three times attack. That is wicked. Now, look, he is a dex unit at the end of the day, but I think that he is probably going to see more play on mono powerhouse teams just due to his rumble ability itself. But that's a really good special. Three times attack targeted guaranteed to all targets. And before he even launches the attack, he also gives the attack buff to all powerhouse allies. So, you know, bare minimum, he's going to have six attack from passive, six attack from special, level 12 attack guaranteeing to hit three targets. Whitebeard's going to be pretty good in PvP, I think. I think you got to watch out for this guy. Now we can go ahead and talk about Rayleigh and Gabar. Now, as we've kind of pointed out with Whitebeard, I did think that there were quite a lot of flaws with his kit. I can't find many flaws with this kit. This guy looks pretty strong. I think this is the headliner unit that a lot of people want to get their hands on. Now, one thing that we have to point out immediately is that this character is either a Psy unit or a Dex unit and is a Free Spirit Cerebral. So finally, we have access now to a new Psy Cerebral unit that could potentially help out with the local sea monster. However, I will say that if you do do that, you have to take off the V2 Rayleigh that is typically used in those team builds. So the team comp is going to have to change quite drastically if you want to use this guy in that team. So we'll have to wait and see how things progress. Obviously, the big noteworthy thing is there's no Super Tandem or Final Tap, which I think is a little bit of a missed opportunity. I would have loved to have seen a Super Tandem that was focused on the Roger Pirates. You know, I think that would have been cool. You know, you have a White Bid Pirate Super Tandem and you have a Roger Pirate Super Tandem. Unfortunately, not the case. But Fear Resistance, Hunger and Pinch Heal, very good defensively focused potential abilities. Now, this is the dual captain. We don't know what the solo captains, but we can assume it'll be something similar. Minus two cooldown at the start of the quest, 1.2 health. 5.25 attack when you have a matching slot, 4.75 otherwise, Psy and Dex are matching, reducing attack down by 10 turns, and heals the crew by one times recovery for every perfect that you hit. This is a great captain ability, yo. Um, and look, we can assume that in the solo forms, they're going to be something similar. I really hope that in the solo forms, they both have the 10 turns of attack down removal. that will be so good. And likely one of them boosts Psy, one of them has the deck slots, and likely it will only reach a 4.75 or a 5 times multiplier at max. We'll have to wait and see. And likely the healing will be reduced by a little bit too. But overall, it's a very good dual captain. The special ability of this guy is so strong too. Reducing special bind by 7 turns. Rayleigh and Gaban also will boost the crew's slot effects for 1 turn based on the damage dealt with normal attacks before you launch a special. Exact same wording as Legend Roger. You know, if you do a lot more damage before you launch a special, the special will give you a bigger attack boost. So this guy is orb boost focused. So he gives you a range of 2.5 orb boost that can range up to a 3 times orb boost. He also adds 0.25 to any attack boost the crew has launched if this character is a crewmate and also becomes Rayleigh Gaban for three turns. So that is an interesting component too. So when you launch the special, if this guy is a crewmate, any attack boost will get a 0.25 increase, which of course means if you use Goldie Roger as the captain and you use this guy's special first, you can get the big orb boost. You can use your Roger special and Roger can get a potential increase. And I believe with the six plus, Roger can scale up to a 3.25 times attack boost. This would make it a 3.5 times attack boost. So you can see pretty interesting things going on here. So special ability, captain ability, they just seem very good generically. And the thing about it is these are rainbow kits, rainbow captain, rainbow special. There's no uh, segregation between classes or colors, which is incredibly strong, right? So all of this in, in mind, this character is looking very good so far. Then we have a look at the crewmate abilities, reducing paralysis by one for the whole crew, by the way, and reduces special charge time by one at the start of the quest. It is a little strange that this character does have fear resistance because this is the only thing you're kind of just protecting. So it is a bit of a weird crewmate ability, um, considering he has fear resistance. That is weird. Now, you may be wondering, you know, this guy, he reduces special bind, but he doesn't resist it. What's going on? Well, luckily we have his swap ability to go through. <clears throat> So this switch effect is going to completely remove his own special bind, so that's good. Reduces the crew's bind and paralysis duration by one turn. That is so good. And also, boosts the crew's attack by 1.3 for one turn. However, it says the effect can be overwritten with other attack boosting effects. That is pretty based. 
So you can go ahead and use his switch effect whenever you want. Um, I don't know how how many switches you have to do to get his switch effect. Is it actually listed here? Um, four times. Oh, wow, that's incredible. Oh, my God. So, like, good utility, um, removing the special binding himself, but the binding paralysis for the whole crew, and you can use this every turn. That's so strong. And then just get an attack boost for free as well, you know? Uh, and then the super swap, as we said, four swaps you have to get. Completely removes a uh, special bind on themselves, reducing the crew's bind and paralysis by four turns. They still give you a, a 1.3 attack boost that can be overwritten and boost the chain multiplier by plus 1.2 for one turn. This guy is so good. I, I, like, words don't even describe, man. Like, this, this is definitely the character you want to get your hands on. This character is really strong. And, you know, the good thing is, is in a way, it is good that he doesn't have Super Tandem or Final Tap because you don't have to pull lots of copies of this unit you can just go ahead and um pull the one copy and you're good to go obviously more copies gives you more stats but whew, i mean across the board he seems good uh, i'm re i'm a really big fan of this guy he looks really strong and i do think he is going to be one of the better legends in the game just good utility all around and a rainbow kit to say the least as well and that's switch effect and super switch and only four switches to get the super swap too like this guy's nuts. Of course, we cannot leave here without talking about his PvP abilities. So the Rumble ability gives free spirit, 6 HP, 6 attack. And if the current team is 8 teammates, team special CT increase level 2. This seems pretty good. I like this because, you know, obviously if you have every character slot filled out on your team, then this will give you the level, level 2 CT increase. And essentially, you're going to have level 2 CT increase until you get a teammate knocked out. So that's a really interesting way to go about it. So his free spirit focused, you know, HP and attack, which is pretty typical, would definitely like some defense. But still, free spirit, they kind of need a bit of support. So I, I, I think that that's okay. I don't think mono free spirit are like amazing. Um, but I do think that Odin is obviously a big character you got to worry about. Um, and Odin is going to partner up really well with this guy for sure. I'm really excited to see that work out. Now, as I was mentioning with Whitebeard, with the CT increase, or the CT counter, like, I don't expect this guy to be 41 CT. I think this one is probably correct. 31 is C uh, CT seems right for what this does. So, large range horizontal for 2.5 times damage, which is pretty typical of free spirit characters these days, and then also targets your free spirit allies for 6 attack, 6 speed, and 5 defense. Just good. Like, just really, really good. No resistance is listed, so this does not seem correct. I think that there's definitely some some things that are that are not right here. And likely, I, I would expect both of these characters to have GP abilities, Grand Party abilities. But again, we'll have to wait and see how that kind of works out. But overall, this is looking like a pretty interesting batch of characters. We can also see here um, the ink effects of some of these characters. So there's the Rayleigh and Gaban ink effect, which looks super sick. And then the Whitebeard one also looks super good. But I mean, out of the two, Rayleigh and Gaban look way better than, than, the, than the new Whitebeard character. But that's just my opinion, yo. So let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. What do you guys think of these two new SugoFest exclusive characters that are coming to the game? Rayleigh and Gaban look awesome. I, I really am going to be targeting this guy. I would love to pull this guy and just test him out. He looks like a bunch of fun. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video today. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. On that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.